hello everybody and thank you for coming back to the channel and to this series of building the rubber powered Spitfire from Grillo's. Um, what I'm going to do now is to build up the rubber motor and that's uh, a crucial part as I've learned. It's a crucial part of the build. Um, the rubber motor is made up of several elements. I'm going to say first would be then the, the nose block. This is where the propeller is actually going to be holding. I'm using the one that came with the kit. Another one could also be used. Then of course it's going to be a rubber motor, it's not going to be this one, I'll just show you this one as an example. And then I need to put the motor in through and hold it then with some pegs at the end, some, some bars. I hope you can see it somehow. Now some considerations, with the kit I have a propeller, which I might be using, I think I'm going to go and use, I haven't used this one. There's a rubber band, which I'm not sure if it's really suitable because it has maybe too much torque I would say, I'm not sure. Um, not too keen on that one and then there's also a hook for the propeller so in theory what one does one takes that hook one then puts it through the nose block and then one would put it through the propeller and then bend it so that the pro propeller hooks on now what I've learned from from experience and from the videos of Max Fly Art which again I'm going to say that's the reference I think in all these things this hook, this rounded hook is not really very good because the rubber motor will have the tendency to crawl up it. So I'm not going to use this hook and I might not be using the rubber band either. So I'm not sure why Grillo's doesn't, doesn't provide maybe better hooks than this, but this is what they, what they provide. So, um, and then the other elements that I'm not going to do quite yet is to build up the, the pegs that go in the back. In the back we, I'm going to put in one rod which is, uh, it has a hole through it so that I can then put in a, a wire to hold it in place and around it also an element which is tubing, there's going to be an aluminium tube to prevent the, the motor from, the rubber motor from wrapping itself around that, uh, that rear peg. So, we leave that there for the moment because what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fold the, I'm going to create the hook. Now, I've been practicing, just that you know, I've been practicing on paper clips that I'm not sure I have some paper clips that I've been practicing on. I'm going to try to make this kind of Z, Z hook. You can't see it too well. Um, here you have another one. So I've done like two or three of these to practice to see how I would do it. And uh, as, uh, as I say, following the instructions from, from Max Fly Art. So let's see if I can do it. And I'll try to do it here live with you. Um, it's not difficult once one knows, but uh, it takes some practice, I think. So I might have to reuse some of the wire. So first one goes like this, then the next one goes 90 degrees to be parallel again. So that is the, let me say the, the first step. Let's see. Not quite, maybe a bit more. On the videos, when you see people doing this, it looks really easy. But of course, those people probably have a lot of practice that I don't have. One challenge also that I have, before I go on, is that the hole for, that I have is actually very small. It's not that I made it very small on purpose, actually the space between the, the fuselage formers is really quite small. So there's not much space either for a big hook or for a, a big rubber band, which is, again, maybe that's the reason why they just provide this, uh, this rubber band. So, so I've, I've got this in place, and then this, I believe, goes then again 90, opa, 90 degrees down. Might be needing the other pliers. I'm not liking how this is going, how that I'm doing it live. So I might need to do it then offline. Yeah, it's completely crooked, you see. So now I'm going to have to correct. These need to be parallel. Yeah, more or less it's there. So this is the, the, the Z hook. This is this top part. And now I have to bend things in so that it's. Um, but this needs to be able to turn freely in here. And it doesn't. You see, that's the uh, first problem I have there. It doesn't fit. So 
I'll do it offline without you watching me because I evidently get nervous with, uh, with an audience and uh, I'll show you the results. So here I have the hook, more or less, not as tidy as the one that we see, but uh, this should fit in through here. It doesn't need to turn inside, but I'm going to put it in that it turns somehow in this, in this area. So it's got to be that length. And then it's going to go through the nose block, I hope. There it is. So hopefully it's long enough that it goes through the nose block and then goes in there. So then on this I'm going to have to put a propeller. Now, about the propeller, I'll probably be using the plastic one because they're cheap and it doesn't break and uh, it's, it's also light. I did make this other propeller, it was for the Wellington project when I was thinking of maybe making it rubber powered. Um, I think it would be nice to have it, it's also kind of scale, it's a bit chunky, it's the first three bladed propeller that I've made. If anybody has any tricks and tips how to make a, a balsa three bladed propeller from scratch that would be nice because this is really an experiment. I'm quite happy with it and I don't want to risk it. I think it's more like decoration just for me to have because I'm sure that on the first trim flight it could actually break off because it's really very very thin and uh, and light. So I'm going to save that one for myself or maybe some other project. But then on this I'm going to put on then the propeller and then I'm not going to do it quite yet. But then I would bend over the, the cable at the distance that I want, or the, not the cable, the wire, and then that should hold in there. But before I do that I have to do another step which I've never done either and again Max Flyart says it's very it's crucial is to put an adjustment plate on this. So I need to cut out a very small piece of metal, put a hole in it so that this can go in and basically with that be able to regulate the angle at which the propeller is uh, is turning. Like it doesn't need to move very much but it might give it some kind of, of directional control especially then for the trim flights. So typically it's a bit down and to the right. There's not much movement in it because of the of, of this nose block it doesn't allow much movement but I want to try it at least then I practice it so that's going to be then on the on the propeller side so still a difficult task of making a very small I don't know what it's called like a, a plate uh, some con con control plate there and then maybe even before I do that I might actually put in the the rear pegs the long tubes and also the the outside tubing around it and maybe even try just kind of for fun. So um, I'll be working on that and then I'll show you what I have before we go on then to the next step. So I'm afraid I got a little bit ahead of myself and I was recording but I couldn't stop. So I've managed to put it all in but I'll dismount it and I'll tell you what was going on. So I did try to mount a plate. Let's see if I unhook the motor. I did try to mount a plate to be able to control the, the pitch and I have it here, I don't know if you can see it, it's really so small but then I found that I couldn't really do much with it and actually then the, 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 the wire for the propeller was hitting the side so it wasn't even turning I still got the screw in there, maybe I can take it off um, I've decided to go without it and see how it goes and if I need to adjust pitch I'll do it like the, the way you shouldn't which is maybe putting some wood inside I'll see, I'll see, I have to still think how I do that. But uh, anyhow, the, the propeller is in and I, I might trim it still a bit, but I think it's good, the hook, uh, the hook is good and, and everything is okay. Now, if I take it apart here, so I've got the, the rear peg which slides right out and what I was trying to do, as uh, Max Fly Art was doing, I tried to design a little bit of a pole to be able to hold the, the motor peg on like this and try to push it in, shove it in, kind of simulating once it's all nice and covered in tissue how to change the motor if needed because eventually it will be needed or I can try different motors. Now the bad thing is that this little piece that I did doesn't really fit in through here so I can try to push it and I did once manage to get it in but then I lost it inside so if it's covered with tissue and I lose the piece it's going to be the battle to take it out. So um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. Either make a new one which is smaller, but much smaller is not easy to make. 
uh, or I have to make it in a way that I have to leave an open hatch or be able to open something up so that with some tweezers of sorts be able to hold the piece kind of like this. So that's a bit of the, of the battle, I'm not on the level yet. Um, this piece, I'll show it like this so that you can see it, is the tubing, is the aluminium tubing which is uh, significantly bigger than the, the peg and that's how it's supposed to be so that it moves freely. Um, I had to, I cut it off of course and then I used this same stick which is a kitchen stick for I don't know what um, and then I was bending it with screwdrivers with different bits and then with uh, the back of these nose tip um, needle nosed files um, and the point of it is to have the rubber motor on it and that it can move kind of freely without turning itself into a rubber ball at the, in the rear of the fuselage. So, that's, uh, that's kind of in reverse how, how I was doing it. Um, about the rubber motor, I do have this one. It does work, but it doesn't have much torque. It, I, I've turned it up to 200 turns, okay, and it, it turns and turns and turns, which is good, but it doesn't have much torque. So I'm going to have to design another one, braid another motor, and, uh, and put it in. But that's, that's okay, I was kind of counting with it. Um, one of the maybe characteristics or, or observations that I have is that actually the distance between the peg, the rear peg and the hook which is going to be here, not here as maybe originally planned in the in the original kit, even there, it's it's actually quite short so it's not, I'm not sure it's, how much is it, so it's 18 centimeters for my friends in America, 7 inches which is not really very much so I have to see if I can put in the rubber braid it well, maybe have a couple of loops and um, and have it at least have, I would say, a couple of hundred turns would be good, so. But anyhow, like these are, it's uh, the learning process as I say, so I would say motor-wise I'm kind of set. Uh, now what I have to do, I have to finish putting in some of the longer ones that I didn't put in in case I need it, but I think I'm, I'm just going to put them in here, there's one at the top and one at the bottom missing. And then I'm going to start with the covering. I've, uh, I've covered and uh, painted over with water and glue the tail fin. Looks okay with the, with the white paper from the kit. Um, the elevator stabilizer actually, I've done it on one side. Still have to do the other. What I'm doing with this and the main wing, I'm painting like one section at a time and then letting it dry. I'm trying to prevent the warping. So far it seems to be okay. Maybe minimum warp, but then I see how I how I handle it and then on the main wing I've covered the outer sections and again I've been following I think the, the tip from Richard Papp so thank you Richard for that painting or covering the whole wing and then putting the dope uh, on sections at a time I think there's a little bit of a warp on the right wing sorry on the left wing but it's really very minim very minimum and uh, I think the worst case scenario would be that it turns the airplane towards the right which actually would compensate the left torque of the propeller. So I'm trying to justify my mistakes here, right? But uh, but let's see. I don't think it's uh, it's too bad. I still have to do then the center part, the center section, and of course then the top section, and then of course the fuselage. So I'll get back to you with uh, when I have some more visible, significant visible progress. Let me wrap up this chapter of the of the tissue covering and the final assembly and the rubber motor. So the model is complete. It's built. In theory it should also be able to fly. Let me give you the update of what I did. I did, as I was saying, I, I covered it with a, with a tissue. I then painted it over with a glue and water mix. I mounted the motor that was in there also. And I've glued all the components together. I still have a couple of uh, bays to cover here. I have to leave one open probably to reach the motor, but I might cover it up and if needed then open it up. And uh, I've also installed then the, the landing gear. This I can pull out, so it's actually just for show so that it can most of the time it's actually just standing on the ground right so so I have it like that um, about the tissue covering um, it's not very bad for my standards could be worse but it's not perfect either so yeah maybe dope would be better I still may, maybe need to practice one good thing of the model is that um, on the kit there's plenty of paper I don't know if it's twice as much paper but almost I think I have like half the paper left which is good there's a little bit of a warp as I was saying I think before um, but I think it should be it should be okay and uh, I believe I can put at least 200 if not maybe 300 turns 
which I timed it more or less, it's about 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 7 or 8 seconds, which if it flies that much, it's already not, not bad at all. So that's the model built. Um, now the next step, well actually I'm a bit of more steps. I also have just an update, I put in here, I didn't put in the, the landing gear, the rear tail wheel from the model because that's wood and I'm sure it just snap off, so I just put in some wire, I don't know if you can see it there, so at least it protects the tail a little bit. I still have to put in the fairing, the, the wing and fuselage fairing, that's a piece of card. The template is on the plan, so I have to trace it off there and then put it on, so it looks much better. So it's, uh, I mean, it could fly like this probably also, but the fairing does, does make it look even better. So I'll be doing that and then it will be the painting and the markings. And uh, you can try to guess, but I'm sure you're not going to know what color, what color it's going to be. But anyhow, I leave that then for the next chapter. Thank you everybody for following along and for watching and for all your tips and comments and uh, I'll see you next time.